Wow, thank you so much. I'm truly speechless by that beautiful work of art. Well, Mr. Prime Minister, Sarah, great to be with you again. I think it's been uh, two days since we were together, and uh, it's, been, uh, it's been difficult to be apart from you for so long. Um, Dr. Evans, Mike, uh, thank you for all you do. Thank you for your friendship. Uh, thank you for arranging this, uh, this beautiful event. It's just one in a, in a cycle of so many things you do to support, to support us, to support uh, the President's mission, um, to support Israel. Uh, we're really deeply grateful. We have no words to express our thanks. Um, Rob Lau, welcome to you. Thank you for being here. I just want to say, if you don't mind, uh, two weeks ago, I think I had really one of the most uh, profoundly meaningful events of my life when uh, I had the privilege to lead the March of the Living and to walk from uh, Auschwitz to Birkenau with uh, Rabbi Lau's uh, father, one of the, truly one of the treasures, one of the treasures of our, of our time. Uh, and he gave me the opportunity to carry uh, his Torah that he rescued from the Holocaust, and uh, it's something I'll never forget. And uh, you may see him before me, although that's not necessarily obvious, but uh, I, like to, I like to see him too. But if you see him before me, please give him my, my best wishes. Thank you. Uh, and my wife, uh, Tammy, welcome. Uh, welcome again. Thank you for... Uh, Thank you for everything. So, uh, 365 days ago, about uh, about three hours ago, um, we opened up our uh, our embassy in Jerusalem on the uh, 70th anniversary of the State of Israel, literally at exactly the day and the time when David uh, Ben Gurion declared Israel's independence. And um, I must tell you that before that date, um, I looked at the future as being May 14th, 2018, and then beyond. I, 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 until that date came and went, there really was no May, 19, May, May 15th. Uh, but here we are a year later, and uh, it's, it's just flown by. Uh, I, I just can't believe it's been a year. Um, you remember uh, what preceded the uh, opening of the embassy. It was December 6th of 2017 when President Trump announced that the United States was recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Um, and he directed that the embassy move to Jerusalem. Now, uh, after that, um, uh, all the questions arose. When is the embassy going to move? Where is the embassy going to move? Is the embassy really going to move? And, uh, you know, the president is very fond of this uh, story, but um, needless to say, in, in less than six months, we opened up a beautiful uh, embassy, we had a beautiful ceremony, and uh, all the predictions, all the predictions, uh, even some of our own predictions, uh, about what could happen, about the, the risks, about the violence, about the gloom, the doom, uh, the reality is that in the entire city of Jerusalem that day, I don't think more than 20 people uh, got up to, uh, to protest. I think uh, more people were unhappy about the food they were eating at various restaurants than they were about the, uh, the move of the embassy to uh, Jerusalem. Of course, there was, there was violence that day in Gaza. Uh, there had been violence for, uh, for a month before in Gaza. The violence in Gaza had nothing to do with the opening of the embassy. It had to do with uh, relations between the PA and, uh, and Hamas. But it, uh, the embassy opened, the sun rose the next morning, and off we were uh, under this new, beautiful paradigm of uh, an American embassy in Jerusalem. Um, let's, let's review now where we are today, a year later. We have a beautiful campus in Arnona. It is um, uh, almost eight, 18 acres uh, in size. That's uh, 70, 72 dunam for those of you who look at real estate in terms of uh, dunams. Um, it's going to be double the size by the summer. There is construction going on. And we have a magnificent complex on Rehov Agron 18, on uh, 18 
Agron Street, uh, not far, probably a half a block uh, from here. Hundreds of United States diplomats come to work every day. They work alongside hundreds of Israelis and hundreds of uh, Palestinians. And I think we've done something that uh, has not been done in, in quite some time. Uh, we have created a new shrine in the ancient city of Jerusalem, and we're extremely proud of it. What, what I get perhaps the greatest satisfaction from is not watching people come in to change their passports or to get visas or to, uh, or to engage in diplomatic uh, or commercial issues. What I really get a kick out of are the tourists uh, who come to visit the embassy. Um, it's worth just taking a step back and watching tour buses uh, pull up and uh, people get out of the bus and they just stare and they look at the beautiful plaque and the uh, seal, the magnificent seal made out of marble, weighs about two, three thousand pounds. And um, sometimes I just get out of uh, get out of my office and walk up to them. And I can't. Well, I'll tell you a story. One day, I walked up to the group, and uh, you know they were all staring at the plaque. And I said, um, "Hi," and I started to move forward. And they said, "You know, um, there's a line. There's a line here." <laughs> and uh, I said, uh, "I know there's a line. I thought maybe." You'd would like to say hello. Yeah, well, who are you? They said, well, if you look at the plaque, I'm not Donald Trump, and I'm not Mike Pence, but I am David Friedman. And um, people, um, I, I kid you not, people got on their knees and they prayed to God that they had seen this day, that this day had arose. They took pictures. Um, there were people in tears. There were people in deep uh, moments of prayer. And uh, the reactions, frankly, were stunning and moving. And I can't get enough of that. And it is, um, it, it is extraordinary. When people say, you know, this is, uh, this is just uh, symbolic. You know, what's the big deal? You moved the building from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. It's just symbolic. Um, you know, that just could not be further from the truth. Um, the move of the embassy was a validation by the strongest nation in the world not just strong militarily and not just strong economically, but strong morally, strong ethically, uh, with a bedrock of Judeo-Christian values that govern every citizen's attachment to this country. That country recognized the unbreakable, historical, truthful connection between the Jewish people and the city of Jerusalem. That is not symbolic. That is the farthest thing from symbolic. So today, um, the diplomatic presence in Jerusalem is more robust, more efficient, it reaches more people, uh, of more diverse backgrounds than ever before. And I would say that since we combined the resources in Jerusalem and merged the consulate and the embassy, I would say that the United States diplomatic mission in Jerusalem now speaks with one voice, the voice of the only boss that I have, I think the only boss I've had in, in 40 years, because I've worked for myself most of, my, most of my life. So the voice of one person, the voice of my boss, the voice, the voice of President Donald Trump. And that's the one voice that speaks from that mission. And we are able to project clarity, purpose, and strength like never before. Um, now, is that, is that enough? Should we be resting on our laurels? Should we be uh, you know, having more parties like this every couple of nights? Um, I think the answer is no. The answer is no. With this administration, with Donald Trump and Mike Pence and Mike Pompeo and John Bolton and Jared Kushner and Jason Me, we just have to keep moving. We have to keep our foot on the gas. Um, there's much more to do to strengthen the relationship with Israel. Uh, some say our most important ally in the region. I would take out the word region. Um, to bring new and bold ideas of cooperation to just make this relationship stronger and stronger and stronger. Someone asked me today, do you think Israel's, is, is Israel getting stronger or are the threats uh, potentially making Israel weaker? And I said, look, Israel is growing stronger for two reasons. Number one, the objective metric by which Israel 
uh, measures itself. The most important one is how strong is its relationship with the United States on how many levels. And that it just keeps growing and growing and getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And the second is um, Israel has one uh, secret weapon uh, that uh, not that many countries have. Israel is on the side of God. And uh, we don't underestimate that. Um, I want to I wanna just, uh, on the theme of moving forward, I want to share with you a thought I had recently. Um, we, we're, we're a few weeks past uh, Passover. And uh, as part of this year's Passover holiday, somebody, I have no idea who it was, coined a, uh, a paraphrase of the song uh, Dianu. For those of you who don't know the song Dianu, it's a, par it's a, it's a song on Passover. Passover. If God had done A but not B, that would have been enough. If, Don had, if God had done B rather than C, it, it, it shows the incremental, all the incremental steps that God has done for the Jewish people. And somebody uh, rewrote, the, uh, rewrote, rewrote the song and said, you know, if, if uh, the White House uh, had just uh, had the first Yom HaAsma'ut celebration uh, in its history, you know, that would have been enough. And if uh, the President of the United States had just been the first president uh, sitting president to visit the Kotel Amaravi, that would have been enough. And if uh, you know the president had been had just recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, you know Dayenu, that would have been enough. And if uh, the president uh, had been the first president to close the Palestinian mission after it broke the law by trying to bring claims against uh, Israelis into net, in the international criminal court, you know Dayenu, that would have been enough. If the president would have been just exited from the JCPOA, from the uh, Iran deal, that would have been enough. If the president would have just opened up the United States Embassy in Jerusalem, that would have been enough. If the president would have just recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights, Dayenu, that would have been enough. Now, I I'll tell you candidly, I love the song, but I hate the message, because the message suggests that there's, that, that, that there's such a thing called enough. And uh, I don't believe in enough. The, the parable that I like better is, uh, is the parable, is the story of the, of the temple in, in Jerusalem and of the altar of the Mizbeach in Jerusalem. If you look at how the, uh, the temple was constructed, um, f to get from the floor up to various um, various uh, holy uh, kalim, various holy uh, items in the in the temple. There were stairs. Now, what's special about stairs? If you walk up a half a flight of stairs and you stop, um, there's no pressure moving you forward, and there's no pressure moving you backward. You can stop halfway up the stairs and just stand there for as long as you want. The altar, which is the ultimate uh, vehicle to achieve holiness, the altar is built on a ramp. Um, it's built as a ramp, uh, and, and one, one person explained, what's the purpose of the ramp? On a ramp, if you're going up and you stop, you slide back. Uh, to, to achieve that level of holiness that the altar calls for, you have to keep pushing forward. You have to keep moving forward and forward, and there are consequences to stopping. If you stop, you're going to slide backwards, and this is something that we don't want to do. So to me, I like the Dianu song, but I'm a big fan of the of what they say about the altar. That's, I think, the, the, the model that we should have. So I, I would conclude just by saying this. Uh, you know, we, we probably don't do this enough, but um, we should just think about for a second what a great time this is to be alive. You know, we're part of a we're part of a 4,000-year-old continuum, a 4,000-year-old history. Much of those years were very difficult years, very unpleasant years for the Jewish people, for non-Jewish people. Here we are today uh, having the opportunity to look back a year later on the opening of an embassy in Jerusalem. When, when we want to come to Israel, we can call a travel agent. We can be here in 12 hours. Um, Israel has grown, flourished, bloomed in ways that nobody could have expected. My, I'm sure this applies to everybody here. My grandparents, my great-grandparents could not have dreamed of what we have here. And uh, it's good to remember that every now and then so we don't take it for granted. But I, I really thank you for being here, and I hope you'll join with me. We need to keep moving forward, keep moving up the ramp, and I think if we keep doing that, we will bring the relationship between Israel and the United States
to greater and greater heights. Thank you so much.